You damn it's Brad Phillips. Look at this PA 18. It's a little super cob, 540 millimeters. This is believe, believe it or not, this is made by uh, Easy RC, which is a an FMS line. So very excited to see if this thing works as well as we think it will. Without further ado, throttle cuts off. There isn't one. Okay, so that didn't go so well. Okay, so far so good. I'm in expert mode and I haven't actually adjusted anything, but also note that this doesn't have a steerable tail wheel. So what we're gonna do is, just for the sake of daylight hours. Okay, so in expert mode. Oh wow, look at that, the prop has been saved. So in expert mode, we don't have any auto leveling and we have no stabilization. So that worked really good. All you have to do is pop that back on and you're ready to go. And then pop this back on. This is a super forgiving airframe. It's gonna flex and it's gonna give you what you need to get the thing in the air. It looks like we have just a little bit of trimming issues probably there, but what we're gonna do, woo! What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to beginner mode all the way back, okay? We'll try that again and see how the auto leveling works and see if it's gonna help us to fly this thing. This of course is gonna fly pretty much with hands off. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that, guys. There we go. Oh yeah, that is so good. The last little plane we flew like this flew terrible. And it was a huge disappointment. I can already tell this is gonna be a million times better. Woo! That was a little bit unexpected. So, for what it's worth, you need to keep in mind, these little planes are little, and they do what they do. But look how nice that is. If you are a first time pilot and you throw that in the air and you give it 50% throttle and you're not even looking at it, look at this guys. I'm just letting it go around in circles. All I'm doing is just kind of pushing the aileron control so that we can go in a circle. This is, this is basically flying itself. I can go by here. That is so cool. Very good flight controller. Super impressed with that. Looks like we need a little bit of yaw trim. That's probably, and then that tip stall is what we cause there. Man, that thing looks good. And look how slow you can yeah. fly it. Woo! It will tip Not stall. Not that slow. Yeah, so there is, a, there is a point where it's gonna fall out of the sky. And that's one thing you gotta remember about auto leveling is that it's not gonna auto level if the plane is stalling. So, couple things. I think we need to trim the rudder. Mechanical trim would be best, but we'll do a little bit of trim because there are trims on here. So there we go. Look at that, that's not too bad at all. And then, a little bit of down elevator. Oh yeah, that actually trimmed really good. So let's get you a little beautiful sunset, about 50% throttle there. Just kind of going along, enjoying time. Boy, a lot of yaw authority. Look how flat that turn is. No wonder you get yourself in trouble. Ah! It's the spiral of death. Now the good news is the spiral of death is very inconsequential because this plane can sit there and be flown into the ground essentially with little to no damage as you saw from our initial wheels up, wheels down. Obviously, if you want this thing to be wheels up, wheels down, you're gonna have to get your landing gear adjusted so that they're straight more or less. Let's see if we can do that right now. I love, I love the way the wheels look, but they, they kind of have that common problem that we run into all the time on these little planes. And that is that they, they aren't quite strong enough to give us what we need. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna try this again. You guys ready? Full throttle and a little bit of up elevator, so much better. You, wow! Were you in beginner mode though for that takeoff? I was in beginner okay. mode for that takeoff. I think right now what we're seeing is that the amount of rudder authority combined with my predisposition to mix my controls all the time is kind of leading to a lot of those tip stalls. Also, I think since we're flying this on a slightly smaller than expected pack, it's probably a little bit on the tail heavy. So we're going to keep flying here. So this thing comes with a 380 milliamp battery and I just happened to grab a 300 just so that we could get something going. And what we're gonna do is pause and go grab a bigger battery and come back. Okay, so we're gonna put in the stock battery now. 
And to be honest, guys, I forgot about that. We were doing our setup and I said, it's getting dark. This is the 380 that came with it. This is a 300 that we just grabbed. So you can see the difference in size. So this one's gonna be a bit heavier. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out, we'll give you a second flight. And that's, sometimes we run into that, but we generally, I just didn't even think about the size. I forgot about that. But that is gonna CG this plane better. Because really for practical purposes, I'm gonna turn it off, get the battery tucked in there, all the leads. These little planes, they don't really even talk much about CG, but you know, even little planes, they have feelings too. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and let this initiate. Up, down, watch for the dance. Yep, so it's working now. Okay, so that's gonna get our CG to a better spot. Yeah, I feel like it's a lot better. It's probably actually a little bit tail heavy still, so you may have to add just a touch of weight in the nose. So if you do need to add weight to your plane, the easiest way to do it would be to take like a paper clip or something of this nature. You can actually stuff it into the foam and it'll go. So let's see how this goes. Right in beginner mode. Oh yeah. I mean, to be honest with you guys, that thing is just flying phenomenal. 2.4 gigahertz. So you don't need line of sight, which is really nice. Let's see if we can land on this little runway here in front of us. You good? Mm -hmm. Okay, well we technically, technically landed. Okay, so now that we have the CG worked out a little bit better, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and fly in intermediate and show you the uh, aerobatic button. So, so there's a lot of throttle. Just a little bit of roll there. Whoa, whoa. Okay, so what we're gonna do is aerobatic button. Oh yeah, it's trying to do a loop. There it goes. Okay, so now we're gonna bring it back. One button and roll. There it goes. Wow, that did a good job that of keeping good. it level. Yeah. Okay, so bringing it down. All right, camera crew, let's go out to the runway here. The main runway. We've been very happy with the FMS products that we've been reviewing. One thing I can say about this thing is this is definitely not gonna compete with your 850 Ranger. The 850 millimeter Ranger is just a whole nother beast. That's kind of where you start getting into the hobby grade stuff. I would feel like this is just kind of a fun toy you get for a kid, uh, for Christmas maybe. And just look how nice it looks. It looks beautiful. Now, is it gonna replace um, you know, your Ranger 1.2, I don't think so. I don't think so, not for a minute. But the thing is, look how much better it is. It's not tip stall when I turn now. Okay, so button and back. It does have enough juice to do loops. Orientation is very easy to lose with this because the outline is black on the front of that wing and it is challenging at this time of night when it gets dark. It may actually be a little bit easier to see, which sounds funny. Okay, so in experience now, oh yeah, it's flyable. Okay, so here we go. So yeah, you can do all the stuff you wanna do. You can do loops, sort of. Okay, and then in beginner. I would say this plane is probably in the order of, you know, what we've seen from some of the other uh, competitive brands like the E-Sheens and the X-Flies of the world. Um, like I said, not gonna replace your real hobby grade stuff. But I just like the way that you can take it out of the box, put it together in less than five minutes, and you're up in the air flying. Now again, we're not looking for the cream de la cream. We're looking for something that's fun. You can get up in the air, have a few flights, and really enjoy your time, and does look good doing that. I wanna take those wing struts off now. Let's do that next. I'm gonna land, I wanna see if it'll handle flying without the wing struts. So wheels up, wheels down, it really kind of struggles. So I would say that if you're planning on doing wheels up, wheels down, you're probably planning on doing a modification. Camera crew, if you wouldn't mind. Remember, no throttle cuts, so be a little bit careful. Okay, so these just pop off fairly easy, and then they lift like this. And I'm gonna stick those in my pocket. I wanna see how stiff the wing is, if it's gonna be resilient enough to fly, or if it's just gonna flop around. 
I actually felt like these were a little bit too short and it pulled the wing down. So it caused a strange gulling effect. So not only that, but I kind of like the way it looks without. Oh yeah. So you got a little bit more dihedral just from the weight of the aircraft. Oh yeah, that's pretty good stuff right there. Look how nice that looks. All right, so I wanna come out of the, let's, well, we'll try a, a high G maneuver, a very dangerous maneuver. Let's roll. Nope. Now, one thing I can warn you about, whoop! One thing I can warn you, sorry folks. One thing I can warn you about with these ready to flies is that when you do that maneuver, you need to be prepared to realize that it's gonna try to get all the way done. It's not gonna go halfway. Oh no, everybody died. Okay, so we're still in beginner mode. What I wanna do is pause for a second. I wanna see if I can get this thing a little bit more nose heavy. We might plop a bigger battery in there and just see how it does with a bigger battery. All right, so now we got a 700 milliamp hour pack. So that's gonna make it a lot more stable flying. And it came with a uh, 380. So this is like doubly as big almost. Okay, so wheels up, wheels down. Oh yeah, look at that. That thing just feels and looks even better. Now you can accomplish the same result with the small pack, but the idea is you just need to put a little dead weight up there. I just prefer to put a battery in that's bigger when possible. This is still 3.7 volts. So it's a 1S cell or 1S pack. It's still just one cell. Okay, now I'm gonna try going into, from a few mistakes, high meaning I get up higher. There's intermediate. Oh yeah, look how much better that looks. It's so crispy. Okay, so in experience, now you can see we got a little trim issue going on here. So walk in the trim to center. Now I'm gonna walk. We'll walk the trim on the elevator. There we go. There we go, guys. So now, as you can see, we've got this thing in experience mode, almost flying pretty good now. Just trying to watch out for that little bit of rudder. There we go, guys. Okay, so with the uh, more appropriately trimmed, heavier nose, look at that. Flies like a charm. Is that even a thing? Flies like a champ, how about That's, that? Yep. So as I mentioned earlier, if you do a bigger battery, you may need to have those wing struts installed because you can see it's kind of loading and we got a little bit of dihedral. Okay, so just kind of gliding in here. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So my recommendation to you, if you're gonna fly this plane, with a bigger battery, would be still in beginner. It still does great in beginner, folks. There's manned aircraft up there, about 2,000 feet up. You see that? Mm-hmm. You show the people. It's big brother. Way up there. Okay, so now I'm gonna land this thing and just yield the right of way in case he needs to fly 10 feet above the ground. Because we all know that that guy is going to be at at least 400 feet. Look how nice that was. Wheels up, wheels yeah, down. That the guy is low, actually. Yeah. You can see, you can hear. So let's walk out there and take a look. So 700 milliamp hour 1S gets the thing a little bit better. I think really the, the rule of thumb is on these little planes, you just kind of have to remember that the CG still matters, okay? And center of gravity generally still matters, even on small planes. But I can tell you right now, this thing, for what it is, it's fun. It's definitely not going to replace your, your Ranger 850, which is a significantly better plane. Um, and it's definitely not going to replace your 1220 millimeter Ranger. Both similar planes. Of course, the Rangers are tricycles. And then, of course, you can get the PA-18 in a larger size class, too. I don't know why I keep going back to the Ranger, but see, we really... We released some footage here just the other day on that. Um, but if you like the Super Cub, if you like the PA-18, you can get this in a bigger size class too. And I would highly recommend um, the Super Cub is just one of those planes that you just can't get enough of it. That being said, we haven't reviewed the FMS. So we're just gonna go with, we really like the Ranger. 
and this has been really fun to review. Um, and even in the toy grade arena, you like seeing things like the, the breakaway prop. You like seeing the gearboxes that actually work. It'd be cool to see some brushless motors. Obviously that is a brushed motor. So it'd be cool to see it, but let's get real. You know, at this price point, you're just not gonna see that, not from the reputable brands. And honestly, the little single servo, the auto leveling works really nice. I'd like to see that be a little bit less uh, insane. Uh, because I feel like that is one thing that's that's lacking on this. That rudder uh, could actually use a little bit less authority. That's something you'll never hear me say. Um, so having a longer control horn would help do that. It would help keep away from those tip stalls because the um, beginner mode does not exclusively protect you from getting into those tip stalls where it wants to spin. So really like the way this thing flies. It's really fun. In the dead calm, you're gonna do just fine. If it's gonna be anything more than dead calm, look at that beautiful sunset. Beautiful, guys. We're getting into fall here in Iowa. We're in central Iowa here. So our days are gonna start getting super short and it's gonna be super lame because you're gonna get home and it's gonna be dark. So don't forget to get out and fly and just get as much flying as you can before it starts getting really uncomfortable and the only people out flying are me and my camera crew. Yes. But all I can say is, you know, us diehard fans, we always get a kick out of these fun little planes, even if they are kind of a little bit on the toy grade side. I can definitely tell you this, I enjoy it. When they, when they release these things, they just kind of keep coming out with them. Different size classes, different abilities, different skills. Man, look at this beautiful sunset, my goodness. Look at this purple and pink, it's just absolutely gorgeous. How's it picking up? Mm -hmm. Very fortunate to be in a beautiful, beautiful area in the country. We got lots of room, probably a hundred acres with three houses. Not everybody has that flexibility we realize, but we are just really, really happy to be here and Love to bring this content to you here on Brian Phillips RC. Working with a lot of different great companies that give us lots of different fodder for you guys to chew on. We just really appreciate you coming back to watch the videos. We love flying for you, but we love helping you make good decisions. And for those of you that are new to the hobby, we wanna to try to help you not be a statistic, a one and done where you get a plane and then you immediately fall out of the hobby because you crash and have a miserable experience. But we do want you to know that there are some fun, inexpensive planes out there that you can get into and just really more or less have a good time. Real low consequence, meaning when you crash, it's not gonna be a big deal. You're not gonna have to like ask for permission to come home from the flying field. <laughs> The 700 will fly forever. Yeah. <laughs> I think this 700 came out of one of the airliners we had, but they all have kind of the same style of battery. We just want to thank you guys going into the holiday season. If you're wanting to support us and give us a thank you back, you remember to just buy these planes from the links in the video description below. Small commissions come from the companies that sell them or distribute these different products that we review. And that also helps us to build clout with them so that when they're deciding who to send these planes out and how they're gonna allow the reviewers, they think of us and they don't think they're gonna get taken advantage of. And obviously our audience is way more important to us than one particular relationship with one particular company or another. But we do really appreciate the companies we work with. They've been good to us. We want to be fair to them. We understand that all these planes are kind of on different echelons. You know, this isn't going to go up against the, uh, you know, Carbon Z T-150 or Carbon Z-150T. You know, it's just a different plane. It's going to cost hundreds of dollars more. I mean, geez, the battery probably costs more than this plane. <laughs> sure does. But we realistically want you guys to understand kind of what you're getting into, how fun it's going to be. Is it going to be something that you can take out and fly twice and you're going to immediately outgrow it? And so we're going to try to put you in the driver's seat, so to speak. You can see 
how the thing performs, how fun it is. Obviously how it performs against the wind. We are fortunate to be out of the wind now, but we just did a, a video. Oh no, we just did a video earlier tonight and the wind was kipping up. Look how beautiful this is with this fall. We had a, a very dry year and all the trees are changing color and we've had just a lot of rain the last few days. So it's very strange. You got all this green grass right now and everything is going into fall. They just cut the, the corn the other day. Really happy with this thing. It does everything I expected it was gonna do and it did it well. Um, it's not the absolute best performing plane we've ever reviewed. And we never want you guys to think that we're just trying to bring you the next latest and greatest thing so that we can you know, sell more planes or market, whatever. I mean, we, that's not what we do here. We just want you guys to have a representation, a good A and B comparison. Uh, we don't care if you buy this one or versus another one, uh, but we do want you to know that we're looking out for you in the industry. Um, you know, it's really cool to be involved in this industry of RC uh, aircraft. And it's something that's been a passion of mine since I was a little kid. And I would have literally killed to have something like this as a kid. Um, back when I was a kid, the best you could get was maybe a control line um, where this would be attached on a control and you'd have like a T handle and you could go up and you could go down. And that was pretty much it. There's our guy up there again. Mm -hmm. You can hear the engine, sounds kind of rough. Hope he makes it back. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, uh, that was the best we could hope for. And I think we used to have like little jets that would go on the ceiling fan. And they, they didn't even totally run themselves, but you put them up on the ceiling fan and they would spin around. That was really cool. But I wanted so badly to have a plane about this size that I could fly inside. And so as an adult, uh, just, just a few years later, <laughs> just a small handful of years later, I'm finally getting these cool, cool, cool toys that I wanted as a kid. And so if you put this underneath the Christmas tree, there's gonna be some kid that's very happy and I just can't guarantee that that kid's not gonna be 90 years old. So if you do get one of these, keep in mind this is below the 250. We're gonna verify that here in a couple of minutes. And uh, if it's below 250, then that means it's below the FAA requirement for no before you fly drone registry stuff. And what that basically means is you pay a fee to the federal government uh, to know that they know where to send the bill if you break some of these uh, made up rules that they just came up with yesterday or the day before or tomorrow, whatever it happens to be. And so that is very comforting because you can go out and fly. You don't have to worry about uh, big issues. But if you're close to airports and things like that, just be careful. Um, know the rules in your local jurisdictions. We're not rule tellers. We're RC tellers. These things are so much fun. We want you around for more. We're going to try to help steer you in the right direction. FMS is a pretty safe bet and FMS makes this product line. It's a new product line for them. It seems dangerously similar to others, but that's just kind of the way it is. And um, I don't want to use the terminology dime a dozen, but in this small size class, there's probably five or six different brands that have marketed a plane similar to this, but this one feels good. It's, um, it's probably slightly better. And FMS is not going to put their uh, mark of approval on something that's total garbage. But just keep in mind, it is toy grade, but look how sweet that looks. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely gorgeous. Here's our he? buddy. Yeah, this guy's real low. Yeah. He's just hanging out with he us. Is. Look at this. You know what that looks like? What? That looks like our X-Fly. That is pretty cool. I wonder yeah. if it is. That would mm -hmm. be so cool. So anyway, um, <laughs> guys, if you're interested in buying this, buy from the link in the video description. You'll help support our channel financially with a small contribution from them, not from you. And then that'll help to keep us in business, both financially and with new reviews, because we're always opening up new broad horizons with new companies that like to work with people like us that review these things. Also, we have Patreon and PayPal as well. If you'd like to send us a Christmas gift, we don't care how you support us, but we just appreciate you being here. <laughs> Best audience in YouTube history. We're gonna go inside and measure the weight of this and then show you how much battery we got left on the 700. Not that it really makes a difference because it came with a 380 milliamp battery. All right, so we just got inside. We're cold, <laughs> but you can see that beautiful sunset. It's just it's absolutely gorgeous. in here. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna pop this big battery out. I just wanna give you guys an idea of how much bigger, oh, it pulled out the lead as I, yanked on it to unplug, to pull it out, okay. So this, like I said, this battery, I believe came out of one of our little airliners. 
And uh, so it's, it's quite the tight squeeze. 700 milliamp hours is about double what the battery is that comes with it. And so let's talk about charging for a second. This is the battery that came with it, 380 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts. This battery has been slightly modified to work in both styles of connectors, but you can see I just cut those little tails off the side or wings. This was the battery we started with. This came out of a C17. It is 300 milliamp hour, but still 3.7 volts. It's seen better days. It's actually a more fat pack than it is a flat pack. Some of the new ones are flatter like this, and then some of the older ones are actually quite thick like this. This is actually two uh, 350 milliamp batteries that are in parallel, okay? So this is what I wanted to talk to you about. The stock charger um, will get the job done, but if you're gonna have a bunch of these, um, one thing you might wanna think about is this Spectrum Micro LiPo charger. And so this is the provided battery. So you can see what we discharged that to, keeping in mind that we didn't start from a full charge because of the time. Okay, so then you can scroll in what size this is. It'd be 0.5 amps would be, or excuse me, 3.8. So 0.38, 3.8, and then you press and hold it. And that's gonna start. And this is lithium LiPo, or lithium ion, I think is the other one. So it's gonna tell you what voltage we're at. So we're at 3.8, so we pretty much ran it down. Uh, but again, we didn't have a fully charged. That's one of the big drawbacks to the included chargers. Just full disclosure, these things are slow. Um, and they're a dime a dozen. You, you can get these in every little ready to fly that you purchase. And then this 700, we would have started from close to full charge. Okay, so this little Molex, you can see I cut the wings off, so I have to be careful to check my polarity. Okay, so we'll plug that in. We'll turn this all the way up. And the reason I like this charger is because it's AC. I've got the cord wrapped around there to keep it nice and neat. And we store them in these drawers because we got a couple of them. And it works really nice in our application. Usually you want to charge it, charge it about 1C, which means the same rate that's printed on the, yeah, see, we, we drew that one down nicely. Okay, so that one's gonna charge. And then this is a C17 battery. That one we also would have started from basically empty, or I mean from full. So that was 300, so we need to go to 0.3 amps. And then press and hold. Okay, and so this thing, is a spinner, and then you can press, see, lithium Li-Hi versus LiPo. I don't know what Li-Hi stands for, I'm not sure. But those are good chargers for kids to use too, yeah. and if they get a bunch of these little kind of toy grade, they tend to end up with a few batteries. Yeah, this is charge. what happens, and um, uh, full disclosure, when you get little batteries like this, you need to keep in mind that they are LiPos, and you need to be a little bit careful that you don't have problems. Um, this may or may not be the best storage technique because if one would uh, get hot, it could make the others hot. So just keep that in mind and store them accordingly. Um, we've been very lucky. We've never had any issues with LiPos. I've crashed a number of planes, really, really crashed them. And I've had maybe one or two. I, I had one plane that I ran a prop into the ground and caught it on fire. That's the first time. And I melted the ESC such that it shorted a battery. But when I say fire, I mean, it was like puff and done. So nobody got hurt. It was a very short lived experience. In fact, I took it apart and fixed it. It was no big deal. And uh, that was, I think a 30 amp ESC. Um, and I think I had a 2200 3S, something like that in there. It's kind of unusual that you hit a prop on the ground and when you drive it like an amateur, at the time I was an amateur, then that's what happens. You'll actually melt the ESC and then things melt off of the boards and they are allowed them to short. So anyway, that's, that's one of the risks you run into. Very happy with this little plane, guys. Um, ready to fly means it comes with everything. There's also a push button here on some of these. It doesn't feel like we have one there. Good trims. You're actually allowed to trim it in flight. This is the one-touch aerobatics. Works really, really well. Uh, some of the one-touch aerobatics will go into a roll and you'll lose a lot of altitude and crash. This holds altitude, which is nice but just keeping in mind that if you hold altitude, it's gonna hold altitude and it's gonna attempt to roll. And if it takes longer to roll because of wind or other environmental impacts, it's gonna keep trying. And what's gonna happen is if there's something out there and you think it's gonna take A distance and it, instead it takes B distance, 
you may run into what's at the end of that distance, like a tree or a house or a building or whatever it is. And, and generally the rule of thumb, of course, you wouldn't be flying around uh, where trees and houses and things like that are, but I'm a realist because that's, because I am. So that being said, very happy, looks good. I don't like these things, but it flies great without them. So I'm gonna leave them off. We talked about weight. So what we're gonna do is we're just grab a kitchen scale, nothing fancy, but then we can just verify that this is sub 250. And I can tell you it is just from having experience with these things, it's very light. Okay, so let's just put everything on there. We're in the gram setting. That weighs virtually nothing. Let's put the plane on there. We're 64 grams. And even with the 700, we'll just discharge this. We're at 81 grams, guys. So if you look at everything is just kind of balanced precariously on the scale, and you can see we're at 81, 82 grams, which is totally reasonable. And yes, this is the 700 milliamp hour pack. So just to give you an idea, if you guys are flying it in your own environment, I actually interrupted this charge cycle. That's the beeping you heard. Mm -hmm. So all I have to do is just start that again. That's a warning if you'd have a problem. So you can also press, and I think you can stop it. Okay, you can also press and you can see what the amps are and then how much it's pushed into that battery. So that tells you how many milliamp hours I believe have been pushed into it. Okay, so basically that's gonna tell you how many milliamps have been pushed into this pack. Okay, so that's, and it times out after a second. So that's 20. So this is a small pack. It's gonna take a while to charge. All right, so any questions you guys have, leave them in the comments below. We try to get to the comments um, quickly, but it seems like when we're really busy filming, it takes us longer to get back to comments. So we apologize for that. We are real busy right this second. Uh, but by the time you're seeing this video, we'll probably be getting caught up um, in a really bad, period of time, we might be like two to three weeks behind on, on comments, that's uncommon, but on a good period, I'll be replying the same day that you ask. Um, but what's so cool about Brian Phillips RC is we've got hundreds of thousands of people that are watching and uh, that's on a monthly basis or even more frequently. So if I don't have time to get to it, a lot of times you're gonna get the answer you need before I even get around to it. So it's cool to see a community like that. And that's one thing we really hope to do and we strive to do on this channel is prevent one and dones where you get a plane, you crash, immediately um, decide that you hate the hobby and you quit. And so, you know, we'll run into planes like this. This is a balsa wood uh, PT-17, which is just absolutely glorious. We got about 20 hours in this build. Um, and so we'll be doing that here anytime soon. And uh, just an absolutely gorgeous plane. Don't start with that. We do the whole echelon from planes like this, um, where we've got, you know, large 6S batteries and, and bigger, hopefully at some point in the future, and EDF jets and um, pretty much drones that'll fly themselves and helicopters and things like that. We just reviewed this little helicopter the other day and uh, we're just really excited to bring you a whole plethora of different types of aircraft and really whatever meets your fancy is what you're going to find on Brian Phillips RC based on what YouTube thinks you want to see in the recommendations. <laughs> so what I would suggest to do is subscribe and then you can just follow along whenever you see one pop up that looks exciting to you. Leave us questions in the comments below. Support us by buying on the links. And then of course we got PayPal and Patreon too. But don't forget, this is very important. If you want a gift for your kids or for yourself or for your husband or whatever, your significant other, don't forget, you need to be buying them early this year. Um, we're filming this in mid-October and we're probably late on some stuff already. So get things ordered as soon as you can and get them coming because some of this stuff is very much backlogged. And I don't normally recommend it, but at this point in history for about the last six months to a year, if it says back order, you better back order the thing if you want it because what's happening is the prices are increasing so quick because of inflation and other um, persistent issues that haven't been resolved right now coming back from COVID. Um, you need to basically order it, back order it, and then at least you've paid for it. And then hopefully they don't cancel your order and make you pay the new price. So my recommendation is deal with reputable companies that aren't going to make you do that. And then two, if you want that product, order it because if the price goes up, then you're gonna to have to pay the higher price. And that's very unfortunate. And I hear about it all the time as though I have some control over it and I don't, I'm just like you guys. 
um, me and Megan have to you know, find these things at higher prices than we realize they were. And it's very frustrating for us because we don't want you guys to bully your hard on money on something that you could have gotten for cheaper two weeks ago. And that's unfortunately the reality of where we are right now. So that being said, planes like this that are just amazingly amazing. And then planes like this that are amazingly amazing for different reasons, because not everybody's going to spend four or $500 on a plane. This is super cool. It's going to get you started something fun and we just review it all. So come back for more guys. Thanks for watching YouTube. Look at this. This is something new and exciting and we are really pleased to be able to bring it to you. Here it comes guys. It's a giant box with a smaller box in it. Yes. What is that? It's a 540 millimeter PA-18 Super Cub. This is by E-A-Z-R-C. Easy. I, I don't know. We're gonna find out though. So let's open it and see. All right guys, as usual, Christmas gift idea warning. Order it today if you want it by Christmas. That is true for anything we talk about in the next few weeks leading up to Christmas. Okay, so this is what comes in the box. Some foam, some more foam in it, and then a book. The book is taped to the top. That's nice, it's not folded. Easy, is it E, is it E A Z R C? Is it supposed to be like easy? Yeah, well, that's what I'm assuming. I don't know, that doesn't translate well, I don't think. Okay, so let's just flip that over. Oh, we got batteries. We're gonna go for batteries first, probably. All right, the most lame part, the batteries. Everybody always comes to Brian Phillips RC because we review the batteries the mm -hmm. most. Just kidding, guys. Comes with a spare prop, some landing gear. This is a 3.7, 380 milliamp hour. And look at this, we've got a little charger. Now, why are we worried about this first? Because we need to charge this battery. So we're gonna plug this thing in right now. We're gonna get this thing charging, and then we're gonna come back. We'll turn on another charger Use the provided USB port on there. It says input five volts, output is two, uh, 3.7, 3.7 volts times two through 800 milliamps. Okay, so it's auto ranging. You just plug this thing in there. Then there's a little red light that comes on, so we'll see what that does here in a few minutes. We do have some more batteries like that, full disclosure. We may end up using one that's charged because we're up against sunset, which historically where we live at sunset, there's some calm that usually comes. Okay, it looks like I knocked one of these out. Some wing struts, so that's pretty cool. Beautiful wing here. Nice and flexible. Not much reinforcement, it's a little wiggly. Got some big Tundra tires, off-road tires, and soft. That's cool. And of course we got, oh, look, transmitter. This is a ready to fly plane, okay? So we've got uh, elevator, ailerons, throttle, rudder, stick down, be safe. Expert, middle, and beginner, and then aerobatic. So it's got a one-touch key, I'm assuming. Love the way this thing looks. Oh yeah, buddy. That is beautiful. Ooh, quick detach prop. Nice. I like that. That's good on off. And then a battery holster. This thing feels nice. It looks good. Surprisingly good. I wasn't sure what to expect. You don't have to build this. It's got a quick, easy adjustment here for trimming, mechanically trimming. If you find that your plane is anemic on pitch control, or yaw control, you can move from this outside hole progressively toward the inner holes, but there's only one hole on the rudder, so you're gonna be right there. Okay, so let's talk about how to put this thing together. It's gonna be super easy, the landing gear. Woo, woo, woo. They're just gonna dance right out of your hand if you're not careful. All you gotta do is slap this right in there. Okay. Yes, that is the correct direction if you're wondering. Okay, so that can go a little bit deeper there. Okay, so that's pretty good. These things are easy to bend. I'm not sure if they snap in if you go a certain point. Look how soft this stuff is. When I pushed on that, I just realized just how resilient. This is actually really stiff. 
So I'm glad about that. But then the wing, more likely to be damaged. And then look at this, we have a servo right there and then there's this thing coming through the top. So it looks like we're probably gonna have to land a couple linkages that stick out the side. And here's another wing strut, okay? So those are gonna go on the bottom. Okay, there's our linkages for the ailerons. Of course, you have to actually put the aileron linkages on and it looks like there's not a spare prop, but the prop, okay? So it looks like you can choose to use a screw to hold on the spinner. Oh, that looks really nice, actually. Mm -hmm. That's surprisingly nice compared to what we've seen in the size class. 540 millimeters is a little bit of a nuance size. Uh, we, we don't see a lot of them in that size. And it sh we should, let's just be honest, guys, we should. Because it's a good size for a beginner plane. Okay, so instructions. Let's go ahead and, whoop, well, I guess that's open now. There you go. All right, so here's the instructions. Let's take a quick look at these. Um, everything you need to fly this plane is included with the exception of probably four double A's, and then it looks like there is no screwdriver included, which is surprising. Usually we get Chinese screwdrivers in these Chinese models. So let's pop this open here. Let's we'll work our way through the components until we're all set. This is a tail wheel. That goes here. And all you gotta do is just kinda do a little bit of pressure to slip that in. Oh man, it's kinda awkward to get that going. I don't know if I'm doing something, I don't think I'm, oh, you know what I did wrong? I'm sorry folks, duh, that's where that goes. Real simple, that's not steerable. So when you get ready to fly, you might be inclined to try to give some rudder input and it's not gonna do anything. So you see, I'm just gonna fold these out a little bit because I want it to look better. That looks a lot nicer. There we go. All right, so let's look in this manual. Fold it up. Not a big fan of when they fold like that. Safety precautions and warnings. Read that on your own time. It's gonna be a super good read right before you go to bed. Um, then over here, we've got some instructions to tell you how to put it together. Main wing assembly looks pretty simple. They want it on the inside hole. Okay, inside hole. Looks like you clip these things in, which is pretty cool. Then it looks like uh, basically We've done everything else. Okay, all right. Pretty simple stuff. The one key rollover feature allows beginner pilot to perform aerobatic functions by simply pressing the button on transmitter. Under gyro control mode, press the one key rollover button. The transmitter will beep several times. During the beeping, simply move the aileron stick to either direction for auto roll or move the elevator stick one direction. So it's basically you press, pull back, it does a loop. Whoop. You press, you roll, it rolls. You press, you roll, it rolls the other way. It's the stupidest feature that you will never think that is awesome until you do it. And then you're like, that is really fun. And it is honestly fun, but just make sure you have enough altitude when you execute the maneuver, otherwise you're gonna lose your plane. Okay, lots more information. FMS, no secrets here on Brian Phelps RC. This is an FMS model. It's a new brand they're starting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a China screwdriver here, which should be pretty easy to do because we only have like four trillion of them. Do we have four trillion? Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay, and this battery is uh, still charging because there's a little red light on the side of the USB thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the wing installed. And in order to do that, we are probably gonna have to adjust the linkages, but it looks like the linkages are adjustable outside of the inside of the wing or inside of the fuse. Yep, so those turn in or turn out depending on what you're trying to do. So we should be able to, this little servo, I'm just not sure which direction it needs to be. I'm sure it's turned, okay, so it's probably gonna be like one like this. And you just kind of slide that in and then tip it down. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and grab another battery. We have a million, we'll be right back. Okay, so we got those two linkages in, but now we need to turn on the transmitter. Oh, it's not on because there's no batteries in here. So we're gonna take this back off with one single screw. This is an anti, um, this is like one of those safety features they do nowadays to keep people from eating batteries. Evidently it's a problem for little kids, so do your due diligence. This is the way the batteries go. The flat goes toward the spring and the little bump goes opposite. They also have drawing in there. It's pretty simple stuff. So if you're buying this for your kids, 
buy it as soon as possible because what's gonna happen is things are gonna get busy and backlogs of production and or shipping are going to cause problems with getting a hold of these things. So just order it, do yourself a favor, do it now. Okay, throttle sticks down, look in the video description below. You can buy from those links. It'll help to support our channel financially with small contributions from the companies that sell them, not from you, which is really nice. You don't pay any extra to support us, but you do get all the benefits of our free content here on YouTube. So thank you for doing that in advance. We also have PayPal and Patreon. If you're interested in supporting us directly because you don't believe in whatever uh, commissions that we can earn on our own. Okay. So that just rotates in like this. Okay. And the only reason we're doing it this way is because I want to be able to spring to life and see where the servo goes. Sometimes it'll kind of get cattywampus. Okay, so we're in the off condition here. We're gonna open this, take the screwdriver just to help make this easier to get out. Once it's out, you can kind of hold this. This is a battery that was not provided with this airplane, but it's got the same type of connector and same polarity. So it's 300 milliamp hour, full disclosure. It was from a C17 we've had for some time. Shouldn't really make a difference in terms of the powering of the circuit. I'm gonna put it right side up. I'm gonna turn it on, secure the plane, all the way up, all the way down, nothing. Okay, so now we're gonna turn this off, which is strange, I'm securing the plane. Turn this back on, all the way up, all the way down. You can see it's working. Okay, so now ordinarily, at this point, I would take these two, just kind of move them to the side. Now let's check the Yep, so it's moving, elevator up, elevator down, looks really good actually. And it is a fully discrete control, so you can go a little bit or a lot. Same thing is true for each of these, but remember there are quite limited on the amount of, uh, let's say, discrete points between point zero and point 100 and point zero and point minus 100. So just keep that in mind. It's not gonna replace your NX8. Okay, so pop this down here. There should be a snapping point. Okay, so that's snapped in. Wow, that looks pretty sweet actually. Mm -hmm. I'm liking that a lot. Um, I kind of got a sweet spot for these small planes. I've always enjoyed them a lot, but the thing is some of them suck so bad they really ruin it. Ooh, you really kind of blocked the light there. I there did, you go. I'm sorry, I'll go over here. Um, okay, so what we're doing is we're just going to the inside hole, but the idea is we want this to be level with the wing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of lift this up, use the screwdriver. I'm sorry, I'm blocking the light now. Our apologies, folks. We always try to give you the best product we can on Brian Phillips RC, and that does not mean that we always uh, come through, but we try our best. And that's why Megan and I are always working together on that. Megan is my wife, if I haven't mentioned that before in the 1600 other videos. <laughs> She's also my camera crew, so that's a little joke that we have. So for those of you who don't understand the inside joke, it's always been a joke because we're just like two people. Okay, there it is. So that's smooth here, but not smooth here. I think I'm gonna just, uh, thinking about playing the odds there. What do you think, Camera Crew? I would say it's down a little bit here and it's up a little bit here. So let's call that even. Okay. Then I'm gonna snap this. Oh boy, that stabbed right into my finger as exactly expected. And then this one here, looks like we need to screw it in a couple of times before that's gonna line up. You see, I just kind of hold this with my fingers. That gets me close to level. We kind of split the difference like we did on the other one. I got to bring that in a little bit. So the way we bring that in a little bit is we take and spin this. So it's a little bit awkward because it's hard to get your fingers in there, but look, one, two half turns, three half turns, four half turns, five half turns, six half turns. That's probably pretty close. And we might just get lucky. Uh, how about that? Nope, another. There's seven half turns, eight half turns, and I count by half turns because it's like flipping over one side versus the other. Okay. And then I'm just gonna kind of get this in there and then line it up. That looks like maybe I, did I overshoot a little bit? Kind of hard to tell. I think we're gonna be pretty darn close. I need to come out half a turn. There's half a turn that's knocking me over there. Okay, so let's try that. Let's go out another half a turn like this like this, okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is pop that through. And then I don't know if you guys can see this, but this thing pops through this and that's called a clevis. Um, okay, so there you have it. So now when you move the ailerons and it is discrete control, so you can go a little bit or a lot, but there's limits to how much 
discreetness you get, if that's even <laughs> a word. Okay, so now these things snap on here and then they pivot in here. So down and in to this little pocket and then just I'm just kind of working it down and then this snaps in here. And that's gonna take some of the flexiness out of the wing. Well, that's weird. Seems like that should be a little bit longer. That's very strange. Oh, there we go, got it. Okay, so now same thing. That's gonna really dress this plane up. I really like the way this plane looks. I'm a sucker for uh, cubs in general. And uh, being that I learned on a Sport Cub SUMX, I'm curious to see how this does. That does pull the wing down a little bit. I'm not a big fan of that, as opposed to being level or slight dihedral. So we'll see how that performs. I'd like to see if it'll fly inside, but before we destroy it, let's go outside. Guys, you know how to do it. Buy this thing in the link below. Very fun, obviously you've got throttle, you've got elevator, you've got roll, and you've got yaw, which is pretty cool. So it's a true four channel plane. Being that this comes from FMS, we also have auto leveling, which is pretty cool. It's finding the quickest route to level, okay? Then we have an intermediate mode and we have advanced where there's no stabilization. So we'll show you all three. Hopefully they all work great. Stay tuned guys. Brian Phillips RC signing out.